Hey guys, Victors here with DIY Time Tech, and in this video we're reviewing the features of Ancel FX3000 Car Diagnostic Scanner. And if you missed, you can also check out the previous videos where we did unboxing and updating of this tool. Alright, let's get straight to it. The scanner is currently connected to the diagnostic port under the steering wheel. First, the device goes through the boot sequence. Then we see the Ancel logo, and after that we get to the main menu which consists of three items, Diagnose, Settings and Help. Let's take a look at the Help menu first. The first item on the list is DLC Location Information, which basically tells you where to look for the diagnostic port in your car to plug in the scanner. Item number two is DTC Library, which is basically a diagnostic trouble code lookup. Here you can enter any diagnostic trouble code and get the definition as well as a description of the trouble code. This can definitely be a very helpful feature when trying to troubleshoot problems with your car. Item number three is abbreviation. Here you can find explanations for all of the abbreviations used throughout this tool. Moving on, item number four is tool information. Here you can find serial number and registration code, which are required when you're trying to update your tool. Next is About OBD section. Here we're gonna find general information about OBD standard, what are the different OBD2 modes, as well as general vehicle coverage information. And the very last item on the list is the upgrade information, which tells you which website to go to if you would like to upgrade your tool. All right, let's go back to the main menu and check out the settings section next. Here you can choose one of eight different languages. You can see all of the available languages on the screen if you're interested. Next you can choose between metric or imperial units of measurements. Next let's turn the beeper off to keep you sane for the remainder of this video. And finally you can turn on the record mode if you would like to save diagnostic information in the memory of your tool. Back to the main menu and let's check out the diagnose section. First let's take a look at OBD2 or EOBD engine check. Let's give it a few seconds to enter the system. Next we've got monitor status. Press OK to continue. The first item on the diagnostic menu is for reading codes. It gives me two different ECUs because this is a V6 and it has two engine blocks. And it tells me that I have no fault codes, which is great. Next you have ability to erase diagnostic error codes. And since I have no codes, I'm just gonna go back. Next item is for inspection and maintenance readiness. This feature allows you to run series of tests before you take your car to the inspection. And I think it's a really neat feature because you can make sure your car passes all of those tests, which can save you a lot of frustration, time and money. Next on the list is data stream. Here you can choose various items and then as your engine is running, you're gonna be able to see a live data stream information regarding different parameters of your engine which in turn can be used to troubleshoot and diagnose various problems with your vehicle. And as you can see, there are a total of 50 different live data stream information items on this list. Here you have two options. You can view all of the 50 items from that list, or else you can select just a few specific items that you are interested in. In addition, you can choose up to four different items and view them live simultaneously on the same graph. Here's an example how the graphs are going to look like. And since I'm recording and not driving my car, we're not going to see much activity going on here. All right, let's go back to the menu. And the next item is freeze frame, which is basically a snapshot of the state of your engine at the moment when you've got the check engine light and the diagnostic trouble code. And since I don't have any trouble codes, I'm not going to have the freeze frame information as well. Next on the list is O2 sensor test which gives you ability to test all of the oxygen sensors on your car. On some cars there are four different oxygen sensors and on my vehicle I have only two and that's why I'm getting the vehicle is not supported message when I'm choosing bank one sensor one. Looks like both of the sensors are still working fine on my car and it's passing the test. Next on the list is onboard monitoring. Here you can choose to monitor one of the 12 different systems in your car.
Next on the menu is Evaporative System Leak Test. And in my case it's failing because the engine is not running right now. And last but not least on this menu is the vehicle information. In this section you will find the vehicle information number for the car you are testing and the calibration verification number as well. Alright, we're back to the main diagnostic menu. Let's take a look at the scan option next. The scan option is a lot more advanced than the regular OBD2 scanning. And here's the list of all of the car brands that are currently supported by this tool. So if you're interested in buying this scanner, you can check if your vehicle is on this list. I'll go ahead and select my car, which is Lexus. Next, we're asked to select the version. There's only one available, 10.52. Here I'm going to select North America area and my car has automatic transmission. Now we need to wait for a few moments while the tool is scanning the vehicle. Now the scan is finished and I gotta say I'm pretty impressed how quick it was. So on my particular car there were five different modules that were scanned. Engine, engine control, ABS, vehicle stability control and traction control module. EMPS and finally SRS airbag module. Under engine section we've got no diagnostic trouble codes therefore we can skip the erase fault data option and next right here for your convenience included the read current live data option. There are 38 different parameters that could be useful when troubleshooting engine ECU. Let's go back and check out the next item which is engine control ECU. And same here, there's no diagnostic trouble codes in my car. And in this section we have four different live data parameters related to the engine control ECU. Next let's take a look at the ABS, Stability Control and Traction Control ECU. And in this case my car does have two different error codes. First one is Front Speed Sensor Right Hand Circuit. And the second one is Front Speed Sensor Left Hand Circuit. So this gives me a very good idea what to look for when trying to fix all of the ABS traction and stability control lights on the dashboard. And right here I can also look at eight different data streams related to the ABS ECU. Next let's take a look at the EMPS ECU. This one is for electric power steering system and I've got no diagnostic trouble codes here as well. This module has 29 different related live data streams available to look at. And the last ECU is for the airbag systems. And luckily I've got no error codes in this one as well. And here's also six different live data streams available related to the airbag ECU. And this concludes the options available under the scan section. Let's go ahead and take a look at the review section next. In review section we have ability to take a look at the previously recorded diagnostic information. And if you remember we had to turn on the recording mode in the settings to be able to do that. Here you can review the diagnostic trouble codes. As you can see there's one record for my Lexus here. And if we open it, we're going to find those two ABS error codes that we just recently scanned. You can also do the same thing for the live data streams here. Everything that you scanned will be stored in the memory. As well as the freeze frame data. And if you would like to delete any trouble codes, data stream or freeze frame information, you can do this here as well. Okay, let's go back to the main menu now. And now let's take a look at the reset function. Here you have ability to reset ABS light after bleeding the brakes, reset the battery monitoring system light after changing the battery in your car, reset the brake light after changing the brake pads, reset the oil lamp and reset the steering angle sensor. Also keep in mind that most of these systems are common on the newer vehicles and if you have an older car chances are you're not going to have any of these features. So if you're not able to reset any of these systems it's not necessarily the problem with your tool, but it's more likely that your car is either old or not equipped with one of those systems. 
For example, when I was recently changing oil on my 2008 Toyota Highlander, I wasn't able to reset the oil maintenance required light using this tool because my car is fairly old and it doesn't have this system installed on it. But what's really nice is that this tool gave me instructions how to manually reset the oil maintenance required light and I was able to do that by following those instructions. Alright, this concludes my review of the features of Ancel FX3000 car diagnostic scanner. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments section below. I hope this video is going to be helpful if you're considering to buy one of those or if you're in general looking for a good capable car diagnostic scanner tool. Also check out the prices of this tool by following the link I provided in the description area below because they usually tend to go down over time. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.